Mka Africa is an organization that deals with access to justice for uh, marginalized and minority groups. In implementation of the project known as uh, Linda Haki Zawaresh Nawales, we are raising advocacy and creating awareness on issues relating to persons with disability, particularly on the issue of accessibility and mobility, the issue of sexual and reproductive health rights, and the connection of uh, these two issues with uh, gender-based violence. The Constitution of Kenya provides for a right to equality for all persons. This includes the right to enjoy all social, economic, and political rights. The law currently, that is particularly the Persons with Disability Act, has provisions for accessibility and mobility, whereby it provides that persons with disability are entitled to barrier-free and disability-friendly environment and uh, to be able to access public service vehicles, to access public uh, buildings and public spaces generally, and uh, as well as services such as healthcare services. However, this is far from the reality for so many other persons with disability. I was born with a condition known as cerebral palsy, and this is not a disease, it's just a condition which is not considered just. I'm a disability inclusion advocate advocate for inclusion and uh, leadership governance for persons with disabilities. I'm an activist in children with disability and advocacy areas. Using public services as a person with a disability, it is not easy. Most well, let's start with the public means it is not accessible for all people with disabilities. Like for me, I had, I had to do away, do away with public transportation because they could not understand me. It, they could not give me enough time to get into the massage and to come out. I, as I, I remember I had a very bad experience. One day, I, when I was coming out of the bus, it just took off before I just even got out of the matatu and I, I fell down, which made me to not to be using public means again. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was, when I was using a bus. For me, it was quite difficult accessing the, the bus. But do you imagine somebody with a wheelchair entering that, that bus? It will be very hard for him or her to be able to access that the, the stairs uh, of the bus. If it's an, is a, a 14 seater, the wheelchair has to occupy three seats and myself, another four, four seat. You see, that's a, a price, double price for me as a person with a disability. And maybe let's say, for example, me, I might be at the advantage that maybe I'm working or I have the uh, financial stability. But what of that person who doesn't have that uh, capability? That is discrimination in a public vehicle because as a human being, you have a right to access a public vehicle just like any other person without incurring an extra cost. And when it comes to seeking services in this public office, you find that not everyone who understands people with disabilities. Because as you know, we have different people with different impairments. So you find that if someone has a an impairment, a uh, speech impairment, not everyone will give you enough time to express yourself and also to, not everyone will also allow you to just have a talk with them. Some things that you are wasting their time and they will even allow you to, to just express yourself or just say what you want. And again, when it comes to health, health services, that's another dilemma because they tend to be so judgmental. When you go there as a woman with a disability, and let's say, for example, you are seeking for maternal health services or maybe contraceptives, I, I think they wonder if you also need these services. Forgetting that we are also human beings and we need the services. I'm a young mother. Uh, when I was seeking now, for when I knew that I was pregnant and I went to seek for antenatal services. I chose to go to a private hospital because uh, I felt um, 
that are much safer or, and are much I'll be much treated fairly and with dignity and and like in a public space where someone will be asking me all sorts of questions and like you know so uh, there's a lot which is need need a, a lot of information which needs to go out there about SRHR uh, as much as women with disabilities are concerned and especially uh, when seeking for family planning methods because when we uh, you go and seek the services someone will be like oh even you like why 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 do you want to to have a uh, a bad control and uh, maybe someone lives with a guardian or a caregiver and uh, this person decides that because you've given birth and maybe they don't want that uh, burden of uh, you having kids and making their life you know hard and everything they decide behind your back you go and have a social sterilization so there, there's a lot which needs because you as a medic someone has come and told you i want you to do this to this person if you are aware of the consequences and the rights that this person has you cannot do that because you are informed you know but it's it's not yet out there and another thing about it is a child uh everyone right now is championing for sanitary towels everything but there's that woman with disability who doesn't use a sanitary towel but that person uses an adult diaper so why can't the people who are championing for the sanitary towels also champion for free availability of our uh, adult diapers any other person with disability goes to a hospital and says he has been violated his case won't be taken that strongly come all him to come normal start with the public health services give if they give me enough time to express myself they will not miss the goddess me they will not uh, they will not have to ask my caregiver as she was the sis lady needs and yet I'm there also to increase my dependency I will not be depending on anyone like when moving from one place to the other if if the conductor can understand me then so I can just move along alone without anyone supporting me accessibility to women in public spaces as a woman with a disability is a task here and especially when for example i say about the pathways in the urban Nairobi specifically they are not designated our uh, pathways for pedestrian and especially for those people who have wheelchairs so you find that where you are passing it's where the motorbikes are passing magari is in a pit up up here and let's say for example before the um, before the county government gave out a uh, a rule that hawkers should be selling from 4 pm you still find it even that 4 pm and even during day time that they have uh, closed the all pathway so for me as a wheelchair user i don't have anywhere to pass and it's not once or twice that i've heard instead is where like how uh, have you called it's already hitting me because we are competing where we are passing so that is a challenge and even now uh, accessing the pathways them, themselves most of them they don't have ramps so you find that if i'm doing my errands alone i have to ask for someone to assist me to climb the stairs and if the person doesn't have a good way i'll be stranded there and left alone to wait someone to assist me to to get to the pathway and that is how it is so bad in the pathways and uh, also most of them they have portals so you are at a risk of even when you hit one you can fall when it comes to 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 go this public offices if if there are, there is someone who understands different disability types then i think i can be also it is also increase my self esteem because i almost feel the discrimination yeah public uh, areas uh, to do with accessibility is not quite good 
because you see in terms of areas to do with accessibility in buildings because you see someone who's using a wheelchair is not that up to standard because you see many areas in buildings you see there's that ram but that ram is not quite that level of that uh, wheelchair user it, are, it's quite uh, getting into an area whereby the ramps there's a complaint in, in buildings where these ramps are not they are, I can say it's smooth any kuna vile nafaa kutengenezwa it's it 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 will be able for that person using a wheelchair easy to to access the building uh, the available uh, reporting mechanisms on GBV as a woman with disability and to other person with disabilities are uh, they are not really inclusive and accessible because our uh, we we can't uh, say that they are not the uh, best, but they are there. And uh, the people who are on the, the help desk, many of them are not conversant with the disability-related issues, and uh, even on how to communicate with persons with disability. Let's say, for example, the person who is manning the desk, a GBV uh, victim, comes to the uh, to seek the service, and the person uh, perhaps uh, happens to be uh, with is a deaf. There's no sign language interpreter. The person doesn't know uh, sign language. You know, there, there, there'll be a language barrier. Uh, and also the information itself uh, on how person with disabilities are accessing this, uh, the help desk. For those who are visually impaired, the information might not be uh, accessible to them because they cannot really know what is their right and even the privacy you know i've come to the desk i've reported what has happened to me and then now before even you taking any action you don't want to keep that privacy you just want to talk when everyone is there including maybe my aid and as a human being i have a privacy and a dignity so they are, not, they, they are not really accessible. A visually impaired person has come to town. She's a woman and she needs a guide. And maybe the person that has given, uh, who will guide her, misguide has, uh, misguides her into somewhere else. You see, that, that lady or that person may, have, uh, may go through gender violence. Like an example, I have a member that uh, went through that we tend to see how that person will be compensated in the, in, the, in that area because you see he, he came to town and went to get to get to westlands but the person that he guided her ali piti ali and she was sexually uh, violated if you're not a dependent it will need you to have someone because you see if 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 i am feeling depending on you I will just be complying with whatever you will be telling me because in that case, I, I will count myself as a vulnerable. When you're talking about SRHR, all the policies that talking about, uh, which are coming up and even the ones which are there, the amendments, if there's any amendment which is coming up, let it include person with disabilities because when person with disabilities are there, it's only when they will be comfortable and included, be included in the society. The changes that should be made for, to make it yeah, accessible for people with disabilities more so in the government facilities. My recommendation is this. If, if the government can have representation in the country assemblies of people with disabilities, not, not just one disability, but various disability categories representing themselves, not, not someone, not someone representing them. This will, I, I think this will work very well because these people, are, they will be able to understand us very well because they also have the same conditions and they know what to go through in the grassroots. So for me, I'm like pushing for policy, 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 and governance in all, all, all areas, in the organizations, also in, uh, in government areas. In public offices, in public facilities, 
I was and gonna say the government should have a desk where they have they have someone who who is waiting on mother's disability. Whereby if someone who has a disability visits any office or any hospital, they can find them there and just have a talk with them because for them they will be or little they will be have trained so they will have they will be able to understand us and be able to assist us to our needs. The government through National Transport Safety Authority. They should uh, make sure that, they, they, that there is a, a specific law that says uh, if you, uh, you have a public vehicle and it's not compliant to disability users, within this specified time, these are the consequences or the fines that you are going to be paying. I can say it starts from down there from the county government the word uh, the word representative the mca if you can put uh, we can sit down with that conversation of making policies and taking to the county to the to the to the, to the county level or to the of the of the governor because you see for me even right now what we have been doing mostly in bungalow disability we have been doing an advocacy initiative to do with changes in policy making. Because you see, if you don't do, if you don't work on policies, nothing can work. When uh, uh, we are making any design, may it be on public or yes, public spaces, let's have a person with disability in mind. Let's make sure that if it's a construction or a building, Let's be, let's be mindful that it's accessible to persons with disabilities. And uh, uh, when we say about, um, when we mention accessibility, many people think accessibility is about ramps, CG, elevators. When you say an inclusive design, it's everything. Make sure that the building, in terms of, in case of an emergency in a, a fire breakout, that a person with disability is inside that building, Ah, akona safety measures za venyana za toka your place. Izo ramps zikuwe na elevators. To every person with a disability out there, what I can tell you is that you are the best way to do for yourself. Go for it. Live a fulfilling life without any fear and be you. Do you own it. We are not disabled. It's the environment which disabled us. Include us, give us accessibility, and we shall live a fully dignified life. With us call upon government entities, lawmakers, policymakers, healthcare providers, and the public generally to all play our specific roles to ensure that all persons with disability are able to access a barrier-free and disability-friendly environment.